In this video, I'm going to show you how you can name coordination compounds and complex ions, and I'm going to do my best to try and explain it as simply and in an easy to follow way. So let's start with the first key parts of knowledge. I'm going to be putting up some tables that are going to show you some data that you may need to refer to and is essential as some reference material. So you've got the ligand name. So you have various common ligands that are going to come up quite a lot. And so here's a list of anionic ligands. So they're anionic because you've got a negative charge and the name that we'd use. So for example, if you had Br minus, we would call that bromo in the name. If you had F minus or fluorine, then you would end up with a fluoro. And so there is a general rule for figuring these out. So the rules are that ide either becomes O or ido, and these can be used interchangeably. Typically, most of the time you'll see names where the ide has become O, but also more modern texts sometimes use ido instead of ide. So you can see both of these being used. So for example, this would be the bromide ion, and that's becoming bromo. This would be the fluoride ion, that's becoming fluoro, and so on. So you've also got another rule where eight becomes ato. So for example, this would be carbonate, and it's become carbonato. And so that's how that's changed. Infrequently, you might see ite, and that would change to ito. And then we also have other possibilities. So you may have neutral ligands, and these have got weird names. There's not a simple rule like that. So for example, for a neutral ligand, you might have NH3. That would be called an amine in the name. H2O would be aqua, and then so on. We've got all these other names. One of the ones that's going to be useful in this video, we don't use all of these, but these are common ones, is this complicated one down at the bottom. This is your ethylene diamine and that is going to be a bidentate ligand, and that will be important a little bit later. So that's one of the key ideas. The second one, and it looks like there's a lot of information here, but it's, it's all the same thing, really, when you look at it. So you've got anions, cations, or neutral, and it depends what charge is present as to what you're going to name the metal in the name of the coordination complex, coordination compound or the complex ion. So if you had iron, for example, we would be calling it ferrate in ionic conditions or just iron if it was a cation or neutral. And likewise, copper would be cuprate in ionic conditions and copper if it was to be um, a cation or neutral. And you'll notice that these are generally coming from Latin. And so you might recognize the, the Latin names here. And that's how you're going to come up with these names. You have to figure out whether you've got an anion or a cation or a neutral substance, and then you can work out which one of these to use. And I'll put on the bottom of each of my examples extracts from this table so you don't have to memorize all of them. So let's move on and look at the actual anatomy of a name. So here is just a name that I've picked out. And what we have is some underlying things. And this is one thing I want to highlight. We've got AM for amine and AQ at the start of aqua, and these are the ligands that are going to be present in this substance. And the key thing to notice is that they go in alphabetical order, so make sure you put your um, ligands in alphabetical order, otherwise it's wrong. So let's look at this name and break it down. So the triamine means that we've got three NH3s. The triaqua means that we've got three H2Os. The chromium uh, with the three is the metal in the oxidation state, and then the chlorine is sometimes called the counter ion. So let's actually go from this to the formula. So we've obviously got chromium, so that's CR, and we've got square brackets for the complex ion. Then we look at the next bit. We've got triamine, so we're going to have NH3, which is amine, tells us that, and we've got the tri telling us that we have three. Then we've got the triaqua, so there's your th three H2Os, and then you've got the counter ion, and I'm just going to put that on the end. And because we know that we've got chromium and we've got that three there, we can figure out that it's got to be three chlorines in order to balance it out to be overall neutral in our coordination compound. So that is the anatomy of the name. And by looking at this example and studying it, it's going to help you understand the work examples that I'm just about to go through. And for the first example, I'm going to make it as easy as possible. I like to start with really simple examples to be really clear about how to do these and then slowly build up to more complicated examples to focus on just one thing at a time. So here is 
a simple complex ion and we can just use what we've looked at before to break it down and work out a name. So the first thing you would notice is that this is a cation. So we've got a plus charge and you can remember that um, another name for a cat is a pussy cat and cations are pussative. So that's one way of terrible way of remembering that cations are positive. So we've got a positive charge there. That's going to be important in a second. So what we would first realize, we've got six of those. So that's going to be hexa. That's our prefix for six. Then we've got an H2O ligand. So that's going to be aqua. And then we look at our table and I've cut from the table before. So we've got copper. And if it's anionic, it's going to be cuprate. And if it's a cation or neutral, it's going to be copper. And in this case, we've got a cation. So that's going to be copper. And then we would need to work out the oxidation state of the copper. And so we'll realize that the H2O is going to be neutral. The copper is going to be our unknown. So we could call that X. And all of that's going to add to 2. So we could say X plus 0, or 6 times 0, which is still 0, equals 2. We solve for X, and I really hope that's not difficult. And we get X equals 2. So what we can do is we can put a 2 there. And that's the name of this simple complex ion. Now, that's a very, very simple example. Let's slowly move on to more complicated examples and introduce a little bit more of the naming. So here's another example. Not wildly different. One difference is that instead of having a 2 plus, we have 2 minus. So this is now an anion. So we're going to name it very slightly differently. And I've color coded this to make life easy. So we've got that table there, and that's going to be useful in a second. So we've got tetra. And you see the red four, the red tetra, that's going to match up. Then we've got chloro, and that's our name that we would use for a, chlor uh, a chloride ion or the ligand of chlorine. So we've got chloro there, and then we've got cuprate. And the reason we chose cuprate is because we've got an anion. Now we need to work out the oxidation number, and chlorine is going to be minus one. And so we've got that, and it's all going to sum to minus two. So we get x for the copper plus 4 times minus 1 is minus 2. Simple algebra. You can solve that. And that means that x is going to be plus 2. So we get a 2 there. And that's how you do this one. It's basically the same thing. We're just changing from a cation to an anion and getting a slightly different name. Let's move on and look at another example. And this one I'm going to call an annoying example. And it's one where it's very easy to work out the wrong name without realizing something. So we look at this, and obviously potassium is going to form a positive ion. So I'm going to put a little plus beside that potassium just to help figure things out. So if we got three pluses, and overall this was going to be neutral, the bit with the COF6 outside the square brackets, that's going to have to be three minus. So we've got three pluses from the potassium, so we're going to have to have three minuses to balance that out. That is now important, and you'll see why in just a second. So we've got potassium at the start of the name. Then we're going to have hexa for the 6F, um, and then fluoro, and then we look at the list here. Now, we've got to decide if it's going to be cobaltate or cobalt, and we can see that we've got that 3 minus there. So we're going to choose cobaltate. Now, what we need to do is you can realize that overall this is all going to sum to 0. So we could say that we've got cobalt plus three potassiums plus six fluorines. And this is just a kind of placeholder for the oxidation states. So I replace the symbols with the oxidation states. So cobalt's going to be X, that's our unknown. The potassium is just going to be plus one, and the fluorine's going to be minus one. We know that's all going to sum to zero, and then you can simply solve for the oxidation state of cobalt, which is three very, very simple algebra. And so that lets us put a three on the end of there. And that's us worked out this name. Don't be caught out. Many people would just call this cobalt, which is incorrect. It should be cobaltate. And that's how you do that one. The next thing I want to talk about is some situations where you would have polydentate or bidentate, tridentate ligands, and then the naming is slightly different. So for a monodentate, we would use the simple ones like mono for one, two, um, would be di, three, tri, four, tetra, you know, the obvious ones. But if it's a polydentate, we start using things like bis. And so you've got a list there of all of the different names, and they're basically the same. 
just we've added an S or a KIS on the end. And so you have to be watching out for when you have polydentate ligands. And we'll look at a simple example of this. So here we've got something fairly horrific. So this long bit in here is just this chemical here, the ethylene diamine, or just EN for short. So let's work out the name. And I've just copied below here. So the key is if we've got a uh, two here, so this is two on your um, ethylene diamine, and that's going to be bis. This is going to be the slight difference here. So we've obviously got dichloro. We've got the bis coming from the fact that this substance here, the ethylene diamine, is a bidentate ligand. So we're going to use bis instead. And then we're going to name the rest of it. So we've got platinum. And then we've got the number and then chlorine, uh, chloride on the end. And the key thing to also remember is that the chloro goes first because of alphabetical order. So I hope this video has been helpful and it's helped you understand step by step how you can name these. If it was useful, please like and subscribe. And finally, thank you very much for watching.